What's going on guys, my name's Zach, welcome to this episode of EVE Online. Today we're going to be talking about some Photoshop stuff, some After Effects stuff and some audio stuff. It might be in like sort of three parts depending on how long each part takes to do because uh, long vids and After Effects is a pain in the arse for me. So um, we'll quickly go over it. So basically my buddy Blood Ruin, who's doing an awesome PvP series aimed at sort of new bros and stuff like how to get into the, the pew pew and the things like that with some really awesome commentary. Definitely worth checking out guys. I'll leave some links in the description probably at the end of the vid. We'll put a little clip in there. But uh, Bloods, obviously I normally do his thumbnails for his vids and obviously Finn and everyone. But I thought, well, why don't I show you how to do it yourself guys? So I was talking to Blood about this yesterday. He's like, yay. So yeah, we'll go. What we're going to be using is obviously EVE Online to get the screenshots. Or you can do it when you've uh, like done your video. You can just take a screenshot of the vid and then import that into Photoshop. Uh, so yeah, Photoshop we're going to be using. And it's really, really easy to make like very nice thumbnails and stuff. Now, I go way like over the top with my thumbnails to make them look as good as they can. Like super easy just to print screen, make a thumbnail, add some text for your vids. But if you've got OCD like I have, I'll show you exactly how I do it. And uh, we'll make a template in the process as well for, for blood if he needs it. So basically what we're going to do, oh, chat's uh, thingy in there. We're going to um, use the Talos and things to do a little picture, screenshot, and we're going to import all the stages of how to do it. So uh, basically you want to hit Control and F9 to get rid of your UI. And already I can see this is going to turn out really nice. I've got the Interbus Talos, the background's like pretty dark for the Kaldaris. On that side it's too dark, so you, you need to be like aware of the lighting and stuff, because uh, we're going to be using the dodge and burn tools, and that's going to greatly increase the shadows and the highlights. So maybe this side where the light's a little bit better. And it's the same in space, like try and have your ship with the sun behind you. So you, you get all these nice like highlights on the shaders and things like that. It looks uh, really, really nice. And you can also use the focal camera, even the station. So that looks uh, pretty nice. Now bearing in mind guys, Eve thumb Eve thumbnails, uh, YouTube thumbnails have got a massive play button right in the center. And also a time index down on the bottom right, so you don't want any text or you don't want like the ship in the middle of that, so we're just going to drag one mouse a little bit. Actually, we're going to pull that down a bit more so it looks nice. There we go. So, I think that's going to look cool. So, like imagine the, the thumbnail now in the top right, we're going to sort of have the text and things like that. And then we can see the ship in full view. So, we're just going to hit print screen. There we go, that's what picture saved and we're going to switch over to Photoshop real quick. And I'll try and go through this as basic as possible, it's dead easy guys, dead easy. So we're just going to start a new thing. Oh, that's not what it is, I'm on 1280 by 720 resolution, just keep that standard or increase it if you like. So that's, bit, that's the basic size of YouTube thumbnails, so we're just going to hit OK. Hit Control and I to turn that into black because white's hideous. And then we can just go edit, and hopefully that'll be there, paste, there's the shot. So this comes on a layer, we'll just rename this Talos. And we'll just use the little move tool up here to move it around. So you can see it's already a little bit big. So if we hit, if we make sure our thing is selected, we'll layer selected and hit Control and T to transform it. Now a little tip here, if you're going to resize stuff, you can see it gets skewed. So if you resize it and hold shift, it'll keep the aspect ratio. And then we can just let go. And uh, back to the move tool. Let's zoom in a bit here actually. And maybe a little bit smaller. Again holding shift and dragging. Yeah, so something like that. So the play button's going to be about here, but you'll see most of the ship anyway, so that's all good. Right, so one of the main things, or main gripes of EVE I get is there's no brightness and contrast sliders in-game or hue and saturation. Well, you don't really need hue, but you need saturation options anyway. So luckily, Photoshop has them. So if you make sure your Talos layer is selected or your screenshot layer is selected, just go up to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and we can just raise that up a tiny bit. Depending on what your, your screenshot looks like, I mean you don't obviously want to go like too crazy. 
Let's just give it a nice amount of brightness. Now we will be darkening the picture so you can go a little bit crazy if you like. And the contrast will just make everything a little bit darker. So yeah, it looks good. Obviously mess around with that yourselves. Next one we're going to do is uh, image adjustments again, which, hue and saturation. Now we can either like take all the color out or we can like boost it way OP, which we don't want. Again, we just want to find a nice little middle ground. You, you can see it starts like flaking out when it goes too high. So find yourself a nice little spot there. That looks pretty good. So already, like, I wish that was in the game. I do this on all my videos. Brightness and contrast or the curves and After Effects just to brighten it up a bit. And definitely boost the colors. It makes like a huge difference. And uh, yeah, so we're pretty much already there, guys. Uh, next thing I do, we'll just add the text in before we start messing around with the picture. So we'll just click on the text tool and then type sort of whatever your thing is going to be called uh, Talos, I guess it would be PVP if it was a Talos. We'll just go to the thingy tool, so then we're just exactly the same as the picture, we'll just hit uh, make sure your thingy's selected, your, your thingy, gotta stop saying that, sound like I'm from Camel or something. And then we're going to hit Control T again and we're going to drag that up. You want the text pretty big? But not like ridiculous, so that looks pretty good. We're going to hit enter there to accept the changes. Looks a little bit spaced out, so we're just going to drag that back a little bit. There we go. And um, now we're going to double click on the text layer to bring up some more options. Now we want to add a drop shadow. Don't know if you can see what that's like. Uh, one second. Let's get rid of that. Show you how that works. So we'll drop shadow there, uh, the distance slider, that's how obviously far it is away from the text. So you want a nice little, yes, yeah, something like that. Obviously that's going to change if your text smaller, like when you add effects it sort of looks different so you might need to like recheck these. So we'll say a 10 for that and we definitely want the opacity to 100% because we want to actually see like from the yellow like the text will pop out. And we also want to add a stroke. Again, this varies like with the size. So sort of two or three is generally good. So I'll just enable that again. So you can see it's like popping out already if we take the effects off. It does actually make a difference. You can see it a little bit more. Especially with what we're going to do. In fact, I think we're going to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Nice little font as well. So um, yeah, just I'll quickly show you a cool site for fonts. Uh, I use the Orbitron one. That's from the like DSX stuff. I've still got it up here. Uh, there's a website called dafont.com, and you can get like tons of tons of fonts like for free. So if you just hit like top, you can get all the good ones. That's a really awesome one as well. That uh, Bebas New or whatever the fuck. And there's some really awesome fonts, there's like pages and pages, literally all you do guys is just press download, uh, save, and you'll get your zip file. And then you just double click on the TTFs, this will come up and then you just hit install, and then you've got it, like for the foreseeable future. So that's dead easy, and there's some really nice fonts there, but try and like use a bright colour, like white's normally good as well, I mean I use yellow. Uh, I know a lot of other people use yellow just because of the fact that it stands out, especially on the dark eve backgrounds. So yeah, and uh, the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to darken the background up a bit because it'll make the text stand out a lot more. And to do that we're going to use the dodge and burn tools. So the first thing I would do is go dodge tool and basically you get three settings up at the top here, the range, so we can like go for the dark colours, the mid tones, are the, like the super bright highlights. Now usually dodge the highlights and then burn the shadows so that's uh, that's the way that works and you want to right click on your screen somewhere. Don't use like a, a hard brush you want one that's going to fade out sort of a soft brush so you can't really tell where you've been there's no like permanent lines where you've been brightening or darken stuff up and whatever size suits you. If you don't get a circle you can just press caps lock and that'll like take it back so you know where you're, you're editing there. And if you use the brackets, you can like quickly resize instead of coming in here and stuff. So we're going to go over the ship and bear in mind it is yellow. So it will sort of brighten up quite a lot. So the exposure 
Well, I'll show you on 100% what you don't want to do. So you can see when you're brushing over, that's like epic. So I'll just control V. So with these, we just need to go like subtle. And we'll just go over the ship a tiny bit. It's very subtle, guys, but you will notice the difference. Tiny bit. I think that's still a bit strong, but just for the vid, just to show you. And same with the station lights as well. You can uh, like just pump up the brightness of them a little bit. Anything in the background that's sort of bright. Force fields there. And then we're going to use the burn tool. And this is really cool because now everything apart from the ship we're going to darken on the background. So again, make sure we've got a good soft brush. Uh, the shadows again, just to show you how like crazy it can get. You're just going to like burn everything but that's like way too OP at 100%. So if we use about sort of 15, 15 to 20 we're just going to darken everything just subtly. I think even that's a little bit too much but especially behind the text guys like don't worry about doing anything behind the text. You can see it's like totally destroyed the background bit there but the text will pop out a little bit more. Oops. Um, don't be afraid of making your text pretty big because remember it is only going to be like a small thumbnail on your screen when you see it so it's going to stand out. And also you can obviously keep messing around with the size of your tallows so if you wanted to make it bigger or whatever. It's all good. And uh, I do, since I'm a little bit of a flare monkey, I've been told of certain people, uh, you can start adding some flares and stuff in if you like. And I'll just show you how that'll work. Let's just drag one over here. So this one I use all the time. So we're just going to drag an image over the top. And you can see we've got a little flare layer. Now you won't be able to edit this sometimes, depending on what type of image it is. So if you can't like edit it. So like if we try to use the eraser, we'll get the, the block thing. We just need to right click on the layer and then rasterize it. And that'll sort of flatten the image out. And then it's good for editing. So basically, obviously we don't want any of the black and we don't want this uh, the text here. So we can just go to a eraser tool and just get rid of that completely. Don't worry about the gap. So the cool thing about flares and the way Photoshop works, we can use a, a mode setting called screen or it's called add in um, After Effects. So we'll just make sure the layer is selected and go to the options here and select screen. And there we we'll go. All the black's gone and we're left with the flare which we can place pretty much anywhere. And also you can use the hue things to change the colour of it. It's pretty good, but just be careful with these because they do get like destructed pretty pretty easy. So what I tend to do is just make it a little bit bigger. Depending on the screenshot, I'll move it around, but generally I'll leave them on the sides. So I've got one here and I'll just quickly drag another one in. Uh, this one and rasterize. Well, that's uh, not the one I wanted, but we'll try it with this one. So I need to make this bigger to match the screen. But that's way too big, actually. Right, with this one, because it's got like a massive glow on it, just like that text a sec, we're going to need a thing either side. So if we go to screen, you can see like a distinct line here. So unless you've got that like bigger than your actual like picture, obviously you're going to see that, but you can use a big soft brush. In fact, I'll show you that on a black background, that might be easier. Hey, so you can see the lines, but what you can do is use your eraser tool. Again, make sure you're on a soft brush, make it quite big. Use the brackets actually. Oops, not that one. Move it down. And then since it's a soft brush, the edges are quite like spreading out a bit, so you can just like fade it out. And we're going to do that mainly for this side because that's the side where it's going to be seen the most. There you go. No more horrible sort of sides. And we need to uh, hit Ctrl T and then right click. We can flip this horizontal and hit Enter. It's still super, super. Super bright. Yeah. So depending on what your screenshot is, obviously that's uh, 
Not the one I would normally use, but you get the, the desired effect sort of thing. And there's a Talos thing. So there you go. And the cool thing is, you can group these flares up. So if you wanted to use them all the time, you would just select the top layer and hit Control and G to make a group. And then just drag your other one in. You get the little box there. So I could rename that flares. And then we could drag that all the way at the top, because that's always going to be on top of all your pictures and stuff. Uh, that's where... Oh, did I rasterize that earlier? Oops. That's for text layer. Which for some reason I've rasterized, but if you you can just edit that whenever. And then basically what you can do, guys, you can just uh, save this as like a PSD, like a Photoshop file, and then literally... So, let's try and do this quick before it shuts down. So if you're doing another video about uh, Vagabond, for example. Let's just quickly undock here and I'll show you. Don't want to do another station shot, obviously. Let's get some distance here. Oh, it's me laser vaga. Lol. Alright, so we'll try and find the sun. It's behind the station on this. Oh, yes, sun. There we go. So we've got a nice little planet in the background there. And let me just do print screen. Let's get docked up here. And back to Photoshop. And then we can just Control V. I'll go to Edit and Paste. And there's the there's the Vaga. And it'll just be a case of resizing whatever you want. You would obviously rename that to like Vagabond, whatever you wanted to call the video. And again, just quickly go over the brightness and contrast and things. See, so we've already got the flares on top, so we don't need to mess around with them. I could even drag that in a little bit extra, actually, for this. Still, like, way too bright. And again, it's the dodge tool that really sets the camo on fire as well. Looks nice, like totally brightening it up. And the burn tool. I'll just do this very quick, guys. Saturation. And obviously your text, which we'll just leave as Talos for now. I think we need to make that super big. Vaga's like a weird size. Then you've got like your, your Vagabond picture, so it's super easy and then like I say, every time you do your vid you've got this template to work from, as long as you keep all your, your flares and text on the top and then you can just get rid of them layers as you see fit. So basically that is the template, yeah, and you're just adding the pictures in between. It's like dead easy. That's how you make quick thumbnails. So I think we'll cut this into bits actually, because it's uh, it's dragging on a little bit here, yeah, longer than I expected. So um, the next part we're going to be making a transition that Blood needs for his vid where he's going to be intersecting some commentary with uh, the action that's happening on the screen. So uh, yeah, cool. If you want the PSD guys, uh, give us a shout and I'll give you the link. So yeah, cheers and I'll see you in episode 2.